then he talks about the idea of loving your neighbor and loving your enemy as as an idea of encountering and being open to the unknown dimension in the other. So love of your enemy and love of your neighbor is cultivating a curiosity and an openness to the das ding of the other, the unknown dimension of the other. And for me, we need communities, weekly communities, where you go once a week and to through art and music and sermons, we invite ourselves to remain sensitive to that unknown dimension in the other. This, this happens everywhere. So it happens at concerts, it happens at the poker table, it happens at the coffee shop, the confessional, pool room. It can happen all over. What I'm particularly interested in but is, a, is the idea that, um, you know, what, what's interesting to me about Christianity is where I'm very Hegelian in the Todd McGowan, Slavio Shizek way, is that um, we tend to think of God as that which is whole and complete, the undivided big other. Um, but in this notion of, of the self-divided God, you have this notion that the antagonism is not just in me, and I can fantasize that in the in another life there is something undivided. Or what's more common today, we have possible world theories where I'm unhappy in this life, but I imagine a possible world where I was with that woman and I would have been happy, right? So the undividedness is not in the actual world, but I, like a good analytic philosopher, have my possible worlds where there's an undivided Peter Rollins running around, and that makes me depressed. Right. So for me, you need a community in which you experience the dividedness in, in the actual world, in all possible worlds, and in reality itself. Mm. And for me, there's different names for this. So in biology, the non-at-oneness of the biological organism with itself is called evolution. In politics, the non-at-oneness of the political body with itself is called democracy. In mathematics, the non-at-oneness of the mathematical system is um, incompleteness. Um, in physics, it's indeterminacy. Uh, in psychoanalysis, the name is the unconscious. And in Christianity, the name is crucified God or salvation. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think this question of the self-divided God, as you're putting it, is, is at the heart of how this can be. Because I think if I sort of come at it again from the beginning, um, for me, as, a, as an idiot learning this stuff for the first time, you know, so we, we met at this... Um, at Wake Festival, which is one of the things you organise, and it's a, it's it's a, it's a, it's very much a sort of um, festival, a community festival, exploring these kinds of discussions, really. Um, mm. So, so my sort of interpretation of this um, thing, uh, and especially the the name Wake, I, I thought the idea here, I assumed without knowing that the connection between religion and psychoanalysis here was that basically psychoanalysis can save you from religion. It can it can wake you up, you know. So, you know, uh, you believe in the fantasies. Uh, of religion, but the uh, or one one believes in the fantasies of religion, but psychoanalysis can be a tool in sort of showing the structures of thoughts which kind of underpin those fantasies. So, in this sense, in in my sort of naive way of thinking about this relationship, I was thinking that well, you know, psychoanalysis describes the structures of of thoughts, and this goes with to, to what you said about basically through Lacan, this idea of a divided subject, I guess com the subject coming into being through and in language and so on, as therefore lacking fundamentally. Um, whereas what religion tends to do, and, and this is what I just assumed, is uh, fill that with fantasy. Mm. So, um, so so, so, my, 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 I suppose I'm saying, I, I thought you were going to say that the relationship between religion and psychoanalysis is that religion sort of believes in the fantasy, uh, whereas psychoanalysis kind of shows the structures of that fantasy and therefore kind of releases the hold of the fantasy on the subject. But what you're actually saying is something quite different to that, which is that there needs to be a form of religion which embraces that dividedness and that fragmentariness or provisionality of fantasy itself and, and so on. Yes. Is that right? Yes, I'm right. Yeah. yeah. And, and you where did Lacan like, get all this now? This is me being polemic about you know, psychoanalysis got all this from Christianity how could you have trans like the idea for example of Jesus taking on the sins of the people that are really ourselves there you go that's the, that's the first basic expression of uh of projection you know that oh. you know whenever I laugh at the Karens or whatever that phenomenon I'm really um ex putting out some part of myself into another and, and letting them carry my lack 
And then in Christianity, ideally, you realize that what you've put into the other, you are actually interwoven with and interconnected with. So I'm not saying that psychoanalysis has something to give, say, to Christianity or anything like that. I'm saying that that actually psychoanalysis and German idealism and existentialism are all, um, they've all got their treasure from that truth. And um right. Uh, and, and and so wake is not about waking up. Wake is a death ritual. A wake is in Ireland yeah. whenever, you know, someone has died and you have to mourn that death. So I make a distinction between a community because a community basically gathers together around a shared set of beliefs, a shared set of practices um, and a communion. A communion gathers around a shared loss, the death of God. Right. So a communion is a meal around the death of God. So what I want to do is not create communities in which we have shared beliefs and shared practices, but communions in which we're gathered together, realizing that what links us all together is castration, that we are all divided. And that's, again, for me, a theological project. Interesting.